right, we're going to take a look at a couple of problems that are written in standard form, and we're going to talk about how to convert them to vertex or graphing form. And the benefit of that, you actually have a couple of benefits. First of all, your h and your k values in this formula here form your vertex. So if we can get it in vertex form, then we don't have to figure out the line of symmetry and try to plug in the values and figure out the, the vertex. It will tell us the vertex just based on the way it's written. Another way that it can help us is it can help us find our x-intercepts. So in order to find our x-intercepts, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in um, 0 for y and we're going to solve. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how this is done. So let me change my pen color back here. So the basic um, premise behind converting from standard form to vertex or graphing form is to do a process that's called completing the square. So we're going to turn um, our equation into a perfect square. So when I look at this here, I'm going to look at my b value. And what you have to do is you have to cut it in half, then you're going to square it. So I'm going to take this 4 and I'm going to cut it in half, which is 2. And then I'm going to square 2, which is 4. So that 4, I'm going to add to the end of my problem here. So here is my new trinomial. Now, because I added 4, outside the parentheses, i got to subtract 4 because I have to keep this equation balanced. I can't just be throwing in random extra numbers into equations. i got to maintain some balance. Now, this part here that I just created a perfect square with, if I factor that, I don't even have to set up a diamond problem or try to think two numbers, multiply together to get this, add up to this. I know that that's going to be x plus 2 squared. Now, if you're thinking, right, how do you know that? If you want to pause the video and go try it and see, you can. But as soon as we took that 4 and we cut it in half and it gave us 2, that became part of our perfect square. Now, this minus 4 I still have hanging out here on the side. Now, this is where the magic comes in for the vertex. So my vertex is going to pull these two numbers here. Now, if you look back at my formula, my formula had a minus h. This one has a plus h, so I have to take the opposite of what I see there. So my vertex is going to be negative 2, negative 4. So in completing that square, it tells me here's your vertex. Now, here's the other thing that's really cool about that. I can find my x-intercepts. So I can say 0 equals x plus 2 squared minus 4, and I can solve. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So 4 equals x plus 2 squared. To get rid of that squared there, i got to take the square root of both sides. Well, the square root of 4 can be a positive or a negative 2, and that's going to equal x plus 2. Now, often we have two x-intercepts, and this right here is going to lead us to those two x-intercepts. My first problem is going to be 2 equals x plus 2. My second problem is negative 2 equals x plus 2. And again, that stems from the square root of 4 could be a positive 2, or it could be a negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and solve both of those. So if I subtract 2 from both sides here, I get x equals 0. If I subtract 2 from both sides here, I get x equals negative 4. So my two x-intercepts, my x-intercepts, are going to be 0, 0, and negative 4, 0. All right, let's look at another example. All right, um, it's always good if you can at the start of your problem to identify any points. And I didn't do this on the last problem, but I'm going to do it here, and that's my y-intercept. My y-intercept in standard form is super easy. It's this value right here, so I don't have to do any math. My y-intercept in this problem is going to be 0, 5. So I've already got one problem to start with, which is awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this in vertex or graphing form. Let me change my pen color back so that I can figure out my vertex, and then I'll use that to find my x-intercepts, and I won't have to do any factoring. So just like before, I'm looking at my a and b values. So y equals x squared minus 6x. Now I'm going to take that b value. I'm going to take that negative 6. I'm going to cut it in half. 
which is negative 3, and then I'm going to square it. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. I close my parentheses. I bring down my plus 5. Now, since I added 9 inside the parentheses, I'm going to subtract 9 here outside the parentheses. So y equals, if I factor this right here, because I just completed the square, I know it's x minus 3 squared. That minus 3 comes from the half of this value here. And then I have negative 9, excuse me, positive 5 and negative 9, which is going to give me, whoops, negative 4. All right, so my vertex, now I can write my vertex from this. My vertex is going to be 3, negative 4. Again, I'm pulling those values from this formula here, inside of there. So now I'm going to use this to find my x-intercepts. So we're going to work on x-intercepts next. So I'm going to say 0 equals x minus 3 squared minus 4. Because remember, your y value is 0 when you have an x-intercept. So I'm going to start by adding 4 to both sides. 4 equals x minus 3 squared. I take the square root. Lucky for us, 4 is a perfect square. It gives us a positive or negative 2, and that's going to equal x minus 3. Just like in our previous problem, we're going to break this into two different problems. We're going to have 2 equals x minus 3, and we're going to have negative 2 equals x minus 3. So let's solve these. We're going to add 3. So 5 is going to equal x here. Over here, we're going to add 3. And that's going to give me, whoops, positive 1 equals x. So my two um, x-intercepts are going to be 5, 0, and 1, 0. All right, one more problem to look at. In this particular problem, again, I'm always going to start. I'm going to over here in green, and I'm going to write my y-intercept because that's coming from my standard form. In this case, it's going to be 0, 18. All right, so I'm going to start here with my a and my b value, and I'm going to say, okay, x squared minus 10x. Well, let's see, half of negative 10 is negative 5, and negative 5 squared is plot positive 25. I have my plus 18 outside of my parentheses. Now, because I've added 25, I've got to subtract it back out to keep my equation balanced. So in my next step, I'm going to factor this. This is going to be x minus 5 squared. I know that because I created that perfect square. Then I have a positive 18 and negative 25, which is going to give me negative 7. So at this point, I can write my vertex. I have it in graphing or vertex form. My vertex is going to be 5, negative 7. Now, if I wanted to take it a step further and find my x-intercepts, I could. So 0, because my x-intercept, my y is 0, is going to be x minus 5 squared minus 7. I add 7 to both sides. I get x minus 5 squared. I take the square root of both sides. When I do that, I'm going to get a, the square root of 7 equals x minus 5. Now, the square root of 7, it can be positive or it can be negative, because the square root can be positive or negative. So I'm going to break this into two problems here. And no, 7 is not a perfect square, so we can't solve that. There's no need to put a decimal at this point. We're just going to solve it as it is. So we're going to say... Um, square root of 7 equals x minus 5, and the negative square root of 7 equals x minus 5. If I add 5 to both sides, I get 5 plus the square root of 7 equals x. Over here, I get 5 minus the square root of 7 equals x. And I could even go so far as to write that as an ordered pair if I wanted to. It would be 5 plus the square root of 7, 0, and 5 minus the square root of 7, comma, zero. And if you wanted to plug those into the calculator to get a decimal equivalent, you could do that as well.